Good morning, everybody, and welcome. It is Saturday morning, a somewhat different Saturday morning, because today is Western Cape racing. So we've got racing down at Kenilworth, which uh, commences, well, it's on the winter course. And by the way, it's a hell of a great day's racing. So you've got the Langerman, uh, the JWS Langerman, 250,000. That's a grade three. You've got another grade three in form of uh, pocket power stakes and then the River Jatez stakes. These are the final legs of the winter triple series in Cape Town. So excellent racing. On top of that, the Olympic Jewel Stakes, Ladies Mile, Iridescent Stakes. So some really nice racing uh, on that winter course in Cape Town today. Let's get straight into it, shall we? And share the screen. This time next week, of course, it will be um, the Hollywood Bets Durban July. So really looking forward to that. Right, let's share the screen and get on to our... Um, uh, betting and analysis of today. Um, just very quickly, I'm showing you this page first of all, because there's two very important scratchings in race uh, three, which is the uh, JWS Langman. And that now is a, um, a field of just eight and two very important scratchings. Number two, Charles Dickens is out. He's off his feed. And number three, sorry, number nine, we're jamming uh, is out. And you could argue that those were two of the main principles in the race. So uh, that race has become somewhat open now with the scratching of Charles Dickens and we're jamming. Just the other ones, race one, number two is out, and race nine, number 11, Ravages of War is not eating up, so he's also out. Uh, in the Langerman, uh, Grant Van Eekert now picks up the ride on number three, Light Speed. A couple of other changes. Race one, number one, Castle Time, earmuffs on. Race eight, number eight, Transact is a blinker strike. And so too is Lucy the Pink in race nine. That's number 10. Okay, let's get on to the betting and go through our race by race analysis. I have uh, spent quite a bit of time chatting to the Ghost Rider last night and uh, at a time where both of us didn't have load shedding because there's been load shedding left, right, and center. I got another double dose. Well, I actually got a triple dose today, but I've uh, started off with load shedding already on the Saturday morning. So let's get into that first race and um, uh, have a look at the betting. Uh, the uh, Ghost Rider selections in this race, I'll get to his thought process in the moment. He likes five and six in that order. And that would seem to <clears throat> suggest that um, the way they've priced up is about right. Uh, number five, Berenberg opened up 13 to 10, now shortened into 20. Uh, 12 to 10 he's a son of erupt out of a warm white night uh, mare and uh, bred by normandy stud they do know how to breed a good horse richard free rides after a uh, average kind of debut he's improved to run third and third so he certainly is probably the horse to beat here but i'm with the ghost rider and i think number six bullet is going to uh, make a race of it he's the son of Corari. the records the stats for Corari for two-year-olds this season is pretty special uh, this is trained by Lucinda Woodruff. It's owned by the Lyles, and they had a winner. Uh, not Cooper, of course. Uh, Lyles in Cape Town, Kirsty and Dad. And um, they had a winner. I think it's also Kirsty's brother that actually is involved as well here. So um, maybe Lightning will strike twice. They um, had Exceder win for them, which we fancied last week. And I think this horse will run a nice race. He might just need another run under the belt, but I think he'll be fairly competitive in this race. So... Uh, I'm along for the same ride that the Ghost Rider is here at five and six of the two principals in the race. Number one, Castle Time uh, is having his fourth run since Gelding. He hasn't got the worst form. He is a three-year-old, so he's older than Berenberg and uh, Bullet. He might be able to get into uh, the action as far as the trifecta is concerned. So that opening race, uh, five obviously uh, has to be respected, but I do think number six, Bullet, can improve and make a race of it. Let's move on to race two, shall we now? And uh, have a look at the second race, which is going to be uh, the first leg of the bipod. There are nine races today. So the PA will start with race three, but the bipod will start with race two. Uh, number one, Benica won uh, pretty well last time. And um, well, at the penultimate start, when against uh, Phillies and Mayor's older company last time, um, dropped back to that six furlongs, or back in that six furlong contest, uh, was not disgraced in carrying uh, 58 kilograms and finishing third. Uh, steps up to 1,500 here. And on a pedigree point of view, being a daughter of Jackson, she'll probably relish that. So I'm not altogether surprised she's been uh, supported from six to one into five to one. She's not my first choice, but um, I wouldn't um, 
die arguing with you if you were going to throw it into the bipod. Uh, number two, call me freeze, improved nicely to win third time um, at uh, the races. Uh, she's bred again by Oscar Folks and team at the Normandy Stud. Uh, she doesn't benefit from an, a good draw, unfortunately, she's drawn nine. Three, Camille Claudel. Well, this horse has always had a big reputation as she finally delivered on shedding a maiden certificate last time. Aldo and Candace Bass Robinson in excellent form. Uh, they form together in this horse, second, second, first. So she hasn't missed the bipod placings and she could very well hit the board again here. But I'm going to give number four, Chow Bella, another chance. Um, she's a daughter of Gimme the Green Light. Bella Bella was a superstar. This uh, pedigree, this vast and tame pedigree is, uh, is star studded. <clears throat> and um, I'm prepared to ignore that last run uh, for whatever reason. Uh, she was slow into stride. She was never traveling as well as she did on debut where she was super, super impressive. But um, she's drawn three. And um, the mother, Bella Bella, was a daughter of Dynasty. So she, certainly from a pedigree point of view, this 1500 should be within her compass and for me she is going to be uh, the horse to get a second chance so number four Ford child bella to find her original form that she showed on debut a uh, five fun zone is the daughter of rafif out of an ideal world mayor so i don't think there's a problem with the 1500 there some of the marlow rides uh, but no real support for in the betting market lady mystico is of interest she's a master of my fate out of a dynasty mayor so uh, the step up to the extra hundred here having finished third to spy wing last time it's got to be in her favor and uh, she's drifted out to 12 to 1 but i certainly wouldn't be leaving her out of calculations particularly as she's drawn nicely at two that's number six lady missed to go for the crawford ricks uh, combination but to show how trappy it is on we go with horses that have all got chances number seven miss marguerite richard three rides for pole position one and uh, she actually finished in front of um Chow bella last time and just behind number one Benica. so um, she can't be without hope. Number eight, Pukulpa is the sister to Pomp and Power. And uh, as a result, um, must have a chance just on pedigree, but she hasn't got the best to draw. She's drawn eight out of a field of nine. So she's got the uh, second worst draw, but um, she was running on behind Spywing when Spywing won last time. So wherever Spywing is, Pukulpa will either be just behind her, on top of her or in front of her. And um, I think you've got to factor that in. And obviously, therefore, number nine, Spywick, has to uh, have a mention. So I think this iridescent stakes is pretty darn competitive, to be honest. It's a question of who will improve the most stepping up over the trip of 1500. But uh, to sum up again, I am going to give number four, Chow Bello, another chance. That first victory was super impressive. And um, I'm just suggesting that that was second run of her career will not be a good and accurate reflection of what she's capable of. So for me, number four, Chow Bella from a good draw. Uh, the Ghost Rider likes number nine, Spywick, by the way. Um, he does uh, respect my filly, number four, Chow Bella, but he was all over number nine, Spywick. You felt that that was an excellent victory last time, and um, I wouldn't put you off putting that in the bipod either. But beyond Chow Bella and um, the sp uh, Spyro Wing, which is the uh, Ghost Rider selection, uh, there isn't too much that doesn't have a chance in this race. So step warily here. I think it's one of the more competitive races on the program. Uh, for place accumulator punters, of course, they don't have to worry because that's not in the PA. The PA will start with this race, race three. And I do think from here onwards, it gets fairly uh, straightforward. Charles Dickens is scratched. So this betting I'm showing you now has, uh, is going to change uh, fundamentally, not only because Charles Dickens is scratched, from the Langerman, but so too is number nine, We're Jamming. And they were the two fancies in the race. If you take number six, Port Louis, and number one at my command out of the loop, they would have been the first and second favourites. So it leaves us with a Langerman that really Brett Crawford has the key to. Um, um, so I say, I did say We're Jamming is scratched, right? I might have, my brain's telling me that I might have said number eight to uh, the mean of back is scratched, but of course it's number nine, We're Jamming. So apologies if I did say that. Um, so just to confirm, number two, Charles Dickens, number nine, We're Jamming, out. So that leaves us with uh, um, basically Brett Crawford against number eight to the moon and back. And I start with to the moon and back because the ghost rider like this, this was uh, the improver for him in the race. And of course, uh, to the moon and back will race in the Greg Bort silks. Richard Faree rides. Silent War, uh, War came out and franked that form 
last time. So he has to be respected. The two scratchings are both horses that were drawn wide. So to the moon and back remains on a draw of seven, which is probably not ideal. Uh, some of his adversaries here are a bit better drawn. Number one at my command is drawn on his inside at five with a slightly better draw. Um, so the two Crawford runners of the two, uh, number one at my command, of course, Keegan DeMello has to ride because he is the stable rider for uh, Kaya Stables. So I'm not so sure that you can read into the fact that Louis Mkotka is riding number six, Port Louis. Having said that, he's a lovely horse. He's taken his time, but he's now come to uh, full fitness and um, was super impressive in winning at his penultimate start. And then last time was just literally a neck behind at my command. Uh, they both carried 60 that day. They both carried 60 today. And there's going to be little to choose between number one at my command and number six, Port Louis. Now, even before the scratching, there was significant support for number three, light speed. Grant Van Niekerk is the missing rider. So uh, Grant Van Niekerk announces the rider here. And he benefits from a one draw. He's likely to jump and go and get himself a handy position. He's a beautifully bred horse. He's a son of Gimme the Green Light out of Fort Woodmere. And uh, frankly, he, uh, he could continue on his upward ways. Now, this was the horse. It's quite interesting. If you watch uh, my Cape Town previews regularly, when he won, I had a, a criticism about some of the riding in the race, not for Grant, because he won the race. He burst through late one going away. One of those horses was Exceder. And I pointed out that Exceder um, was better than that performance. And that's why I liked him last time. He came out and franked that form and won and shed his own maiden certificate. Of course, Exceder is a four-year-old. This uh, light speed is a two-year-old. But I have to say that when he won, he was very impressive. He put his field to the sword, quicked away nicely. So I'm not surprised at all that there is money for number three light speed. He looks to have bags and bags of talent. So initially, at first glance, you might have thought that the race is set up for the Crawford team, number one at my commander, number six, Port Louis, and they certainly will be on the premises. But I am expanding uh, my thought process to include number three, Lightspeed, and also the other snake runner, number eight, to the moon and back. So that's my take on that race. If you're asking me for a, a, a pecking order, I'm going to go three, Lightspeed, one at my command, uh, six Port Louis and eight to the moon and back. Those are my four in that order. Uh, the Ghost Rider, uh, and I discussed before Charles Dickens was scratched, so he will now elevate to the moon and back as his uh, first selection. On to race four we go. Right, let me try and pick up the pace here as we move on to another one of these uh, supporting features today. There are some good races on the program. Uh, this fourth race, if I can get to the right page, is uh, the Ladies' Mile is a listed event over 1,600 metres. So rain, uh, rain in Newmarket is 22 to 10. I think that's not the worst value I've ever seen. I thought he might be a bit cheap, might be a bit shorter. Um, she's probably that price because number two, Veronica Mars and her uh, have some history. And um, she's a year older, is Veronica Mars. She's got Aldo riding and she's drawn two. But I remain in the camp of number one, rain in Newmarket here. Um, there is the one horse that I wanted to talk about, and uh, that's actually the 12 to 1 shot number three, so flawless. Um, she hasn't run for 144 days. That is the only negative, uh, but Andre Nell generally brings his horses to the uh, races fit. And if she is fit, I think she could be a surprise package. She's run uh, close up to the likes of Silver Maria, uh, Hootsbreit, uh, Marina in recent times, Pink Tourmaline, who won again the other day. And uh, the last run before her break, which was in February, was by Black Silver. Uh, but on a couple of form lines, collateral form lines, she comes in quite well. So number three, so flawless. If she's ready to uh, give her her best, could be a surprise package. Uh, but for me, number one, reign in Newmarket is uh, the horse to beat. Interesting, I've been talking about so flawless. Um, Andre Nell actually uh, sends out number eight, Fusillard, as well. And Grant Van Niekerk rides that. So you could perhaps argue that that's going to be uh, the horse to be with um, as far as the Nell Yard are concerned. So I have to respect that. If I like number three, so flawless, I have to respect number eight, Fusillard in that race. Okay, let's uh, pause quickly because I'm being invaded by my kids. Right, uh, we're back on with some uh, swift discipline. 
Uh, let's move on to, so that sums up that race. So duplicity is the only other one I would mention because um, it's, of course, a, a sister to Clouds Unfold who uh, did uh, the best of the best at the top level. So you have to respect um, uh, the pedigree there. But for me, rain in new market, uh, for the PA point of view, I'll probably be taking my chances of bankering rain in new market there at uh, reasonably good odds of 22 to 10. On we go to uh, a sprint race. I spoke earlier on about the Crawford Yard, that they might have the Langerman, um, or certainly a big say in the Langerman. Uh, they've certainly got a massive say in this Olympic dual stakes, and I think that uh, here they will dominate. Uh, the Ghost Rider, by the way, likes four and six in this race, which are both uh, two of the three Crawford runners. Uh, I like them in the other order. I like four from one. Uh, he likes four from six, but uh, we're both on the uh, Brett Crawford train here uh, with number four, um, I've got to sing, what's new, Pussycat? Whoa, 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 uh, that's the uh, favourite here. Uh, Brett Crawford's got the uh, same families here because the Kisvetters have got the what's new, Pussycat offspring. Uh, four, whoa, 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 is the younger sister to number one, Kitty Cat Chat. I don't think that was Kitty Cat Chat's run last time. I, I think she'll be uh, bouncing back to something of her best here. Uh, but she does have to ship four kilograms to four, whoa, whoa, whoa. And that's why it remains my first choice. So four from one for me. I've mentioned that the Ghost Riders is four from uh, six. Uh, touches of board for numbers two, seven, and eight here. Two major attraction is of interest to me. Now, this is a race where she was third in the Scepter Stakes last year. Um, sorry, this year she was third in the Scepter Stakes by Captain's Ransom. No, that was the... That was the Mallorca, wasn't it? It was in the uh, Scepter Stakes when she ran third to Gimme Dat. Uh, in the same race, there was another horse that ran there. Was it um, Marmalisa? Might well have been. But I did find some collateral form that gave Major Attraction a bit of a sneak uh, for the minor money. Can't find where that other Scepter Stakes form is. But um, worth mentioning. The other two at the bottom, well, number seven, Marmalisa, actually on some lines of form looks quite well in here. Uh, so she could be an upset potential. Uh, fifth last year off one and a half kilograms is what I wrote in this race. So she ran fifth by Capitana in the Olympic stakes, Olympic dual stakes last year, to number seven, Marmalisa. And uh, as a result, with one and a half kilograms less on her back, uh, she could work her way into the trifectas and quartets. Uh, the other horse that's been tickled up, number eight, going up is a lovely pedigree daughter of Gimme the Green Light out of the uh, Gold Keeper Mare. And uh, since her maiden, which was on debut, she's been there or thereabouts, probably not quite uh, producing her best form of late. Right, so for me, I'm taking my chances here with the uh, Crawford Yard, four, one, and two. Four, one, and two. Um, you heard that the Ghost Rider likes the six walk of fame. Let's move on to race six now. This is going to be uh, the first of our final legs of the Triple Crown Series, the Winter Series in Cape Town. We start with the Phillies uh, running in the World Sports Betting River Jeter Stakes listed. Now we're stepping over to 2,400. As with all of the final legs of Triple Crowns, it's really a question before you even look at anything else is um, pedigrees and whether they will stay the trip because you don't win races if you don't stay. Now, this is a big step up to 2,400. So Maria Quarrell, who won the second leg, uh, goes now the extra 600 metres, as do all of them. I don't think too many fillies. Maybe there's just one. Did um, double check, I think, the eight has tried the 2,400 before and actually stayed on quite nicely. That's number six, double check. So she certainly stays and has the blinkers on. But the rest of them are going into uncharted territory. Um, the Ghost Riders, two selections here are four from, well, those are mine actually, but this is the same horse. Number four fleeting is the Ghost Riders' first choice um, and pretty much a strong one. He likes four to beat two young love, who he reckons is the approver in the race. Uh, I would tend to agree with him, but I wouldn't be quite as bullish about number four fleeting. I think there are others in the race. Uh, five, Quet Wet Moi, uh, does interest me. She's a master of my fate. She uh, steps up to this 2,400 metres, and uh, I think she'll stay and she'll be on the premises. So she's not without a chance. And then I did mention earlier on that number six, double check, has Blinkers and Keegan DeMello on and has been the trip. 
and ran second to the future is Bright, who I think is a cult. So she ran against Colts, uh, Colts that day. The future is Bright, I think, runs in the next race, which is the last leg of the um, male, the Colts uh, triple uh, crown winter series. So that would be my Ruffy in the race number six, double check, because I know that she does stay. So to sum up in this race, four fleeting is our first choice, but she's been easing in the betting market. There's been money for the ghost rider, Shrewdy number two, Young Love, who is a twice over Grand Finico ride. So you've got to respect that. So four, two, and six would probably be our combined combination there. Although you have to respect number five, Quattro Moore, and number one, Maria Corral. Let's move on to race seven. This is the Colts equivalent, the last leg of the Cape Winter series. And we know that Jem King has dominated that so far. I'm on the camp of Winchester Mansion today. And it's only if it was racing again over a mile or 1800, then I'd be on Jem King. But the step up to 2400, as I just said, uh, changes the playing field and requires a different argument. And for me, number two, Winchester Mansion, um, out of a spectrum mare, I think will relish the step up. Louis and Potwa um, rides again. Uh, Greg Sheen's ridden him on his last three occasions, but Louis's back on board. He's the one that was the jockey when he won. Um, interesting, though, that I would be tipping a one-time winner against a five-time winner at um, just about level weights because Winchester Mansion only gets a kilogram from Jem King. So Jem King has won five, and it's uh, pretty obvious that he's going to be a huge runner. But number two, Winchester Mansion was closing in hand over fist behind him over 1,800. And with a step up of the extra 600 metres, I'm going to take my chances. Rather take the five to two for me about Winchester Mansion than the 11 to 10, number one, Jem King. Interesting that there's a touch of support for number five, the future is bright. I mentioned with the filly in the earlier race uh, that, that she had gone 2,400. And it was that race um, where the future is bright beat double check which proves to me that he does get the trip for uh, John Rycroft, who's been in the game for uh, some time, not with these silks, but it's good to have John back. And he looks like he's got a nice horse here. And this horse certainly stays. And as a result, you can't leave him out of the equation. Uh, just want to sum up the Ghost Rider liked, uh, Ghost Rider was on one, Jem King. So he did like one, said, mind you, he said, uh, Jem King will win if he stays. I'm saying that I think Winchester Mansion might stay better. But the Ghost Rider went one, two, and five, which is pretty similar to the way I'm going. I'm just going two, one, and five. Okay, let's move on to the eighth race and uh, have a look at this. Ah, they backed my horse. That's not my money. I wish it was, but it's not. I like Sergey in this race, um, and I see there's been money for him. Sergey in the uh, silks of our good friends, Suzette and Barcy for you. And that's not why I like him, obviously. I like him on four. Um, and also, I like him because he's uh, now, uh, well, if you have a look at his uh, course and distance trip, he's run three times over this Kenilworth six furlongs for two wins and a second. Uh, Samanga Kamalo takes over. He's drawn okay at six. Ideally, you'd probably like him drawing a fraction. Excuse me, lower, but um, not the straight, not going to make that much of a difference. Uh, let me come back to the betting, though. Well, I better stay with the betting because Sergio has been back. So I really liked him. Uh, he opened up at six to one. I wish I had been on the six to one. He's now seven to two. That story and what I told you tells exactly why I like him. He's the son of Verson Getrix, Brett Crawford uh, Yard in uh, sparkling form. And I thought, sure, six to one. I wish I'd seen that last night. Um, World's Your Oyster is the other one that's been back now. He's been, I think, off his best form in recent times. Uh, he's much better than his last couple of runs. Uh, I like the booking of Greg Sheen again. Greg's got a great relationship with him. Uh, he's had six rides on him. He's won 50% of those with three victories. He also likes this course and distance, does number four, World's Your Oyster, which is why I'm talking about him behind Sergey, who has won twice over the course and distance. Um, World's Your Oyster has won five times, five times over this tracking trip. So, again, at 10 to 1, he was excellent value. So, interesting that there's been money for my two, uh, in inverted commas, roughies in the race. Let's go back to the form runners. Well, number one, Resonate has done nothing wrong. He's also owned by our good friends, Fallard and Drew. They own, along with Campbell, number four, World's Your Oyster. Uh, but Resonate is winning his races really well. Um, he's a little bit like Tchaikovsky, who is winning and getting better all the time. He won the last race the last time we raced 
at Kenilworth, and he quickened up from virtually last to be super impressive under Aldo. Uh, there was um, shades of that performance, the Tchaikovsky performance in Resonate's victory last time. He was switched off, came from just off the pace, but swept on by and won nicely. Um, Speed Machine, he re-engages here, and um, theoretically, he should get beaten by Speed Machine. He's two kilograms worse off, and he only beaten by 0.4. But a little bit in the same category as Tchaikovsky, there might be more improvement to come. And uh, I wouldn't be surprised if Resonate confirmed and franked that Speed Machine form. Equally, though, um, Speed Machine, who hasn't won for some time, when last did he win? 319 days ago. Um, you know, it's a surprise in that respect that he hasn't won since then. But he is reasonably well in, certainly on the Resonate run last time. The Ghost Rider, by the way, liked Resonate. He went 1, 5, and 2. He's gone 1, 5, and 2. You gather that that will not be my selection, 1, 5, 2. This is probably the one race that I disagree with the Ghost Rider, and he disagrees with me. He's gone 1, 5, and 2. I'm looking for a bit of a result. I do respect number 5, Double Charge. You've got to. Um, he um, is the third of the triplet that has stunning course and distance form. He's got Grant Van Eekert back on board. Grant's won five times on him and he's finished second five times. But as far as the distance, course and distance form is concerned, Double Charge has run over this kennel with 1,200 11 times for three wins and five seconds. So he's certainly a, a bipod kind of horse with that record over this track and trip. So he's got to have a say. But for me, the value, well, I'm not so sure there's value anymore, uh, is number six, Sergey. So for my bipod, I would be going, I'll take my chances actually a little bit with the horses slightly um, lower in the weights. My bipod numbers are four, five, and six. If you're going to play a bipod, I would go four, five, and six here. Clearly, the ghost rider would throw in one and two. Nice race, quality race, some good horses. Uh, you've heard my take on it. Let's move on to, I can hear people shouting, but Neil, you tipped Rocking Ringo last time. You said you had a gut feel and it arrived and we back to 16 to 1. What's happened? Well, I think he's back to six furlongs. What's this from here? Nah, not for me today. I mean, lovely horse, Rocking Ringo. He's won 10 times and I backed him again last time, but uh, this is a different kettle of fish. Uh, so I'm not going for Rocking Ringo today, just in case anybody uh, asks. Right, let's move on to race nine. And um, this is a weak field. I thought this was a weak field. Let me start with the, yeah, I've actually got Britain here. No disrespect to those who own horses in the race. There might be one or two to come out of it, and improve. But I wrote here, won't take much winning, moderate field. Ghost Rider, let me start with him. He likes two and nine. He likes two wayward girl. Um, she... Yeah, she's got to have a chance. She's drawn three pick corner all for runs. The penultimate run, she was drawn 12 out of 12, so I would ignore that. The time before that, she was drawn seven out of seven. So two of her last three runs, she's had the worst of the draw. Much better drawn here. She's a Rafif, and um, she probably will be on the premises in an open race, so I can't put him off that. His second choice was number nine, Love is a Rose. He was a little bit worried about the yards for him. He might have a point there, but um, this is a daughter of Master of My Fates. Uh, in fact, I think the, the sister ran on whenever we had racing in Cape Town Monday or Tuesday, I think it was. Um, it's with the Bass Robinson Yard, and I think it ran a place. But um, she's drawn one, love is Rose. Uh, the last run, although she did run third, I think actually she ran a little bit below her form. I think she's a bit better than that. But she did drift in the betting market. Uh, but she's got the bonus of Richard Free and a one draw. Uh, that's number nine, love is Rose. But for me, the race doesn't stop there. I think number four, Heir of Royalty, is a runner here. She is stepping up to the miles. She's a daughter of elusive fort, so she will certainly relish that. Uh, Paddy Creer has always been a great horseman, great horse conditioning. He had a winner on Tuesday at that meeting, which I quite liked. And um, it wouldn't surprise me if there was another Creer winner here. Um, the last run was pretty useful behind Quick Step. She finished third. But she was drawn nine out of nine. So I think she is likely to improve. Uh, Devin Ashby keeps the ride, which uh, shows some loyalty. And uh, I think that she will be competitive number four heir of royalty in this race. Just a couple of others, because I said it's a moderate field and fairly open. Uh, number one, Sonora Victoria. 
Alf Duncan's uh, filly that he bred, it's owned by Carruthers Marair and uh, Glenn Puller himself and uh, Denarbrica. Uh, that too was poorly drawn. In the race where Heir of Royalty ran third, was drawn nine out of nine. Signora Victoria was just behind, also wasn't well drawn. She was drawn eight out of nine, so she too could improve. I don't think wherever Heir of Royalty is, uh, Signora Victoria isn't going to be too far behind. Uh, are there any roughies in the race? Uh, just a quick one with the equipment change there at the bottom, number 10. Lucy, the pink, now has um, blinkers fitted. She's drawn two, so that's a, in her benefit. Um, number six, Bella Mo ran in the Phillies Nursery, uh, the Cape Phillies Nursery. This is number six. But here, and then she ran again in that juvenile company uh, where Spy Wing won. Um, I'd give her a bit of a sneak, actually, but she's drawn 11. She's got a shocking draw to overcome as number six, Bella Mo, uh, which is not going to be in her favour. Um, but it is a race where you can't completely rule out a upset. Don't like that last race at all. Uh, so to sum up, Ghost Rider likes two and nine, and I like four, Air of Royalty. Air four and one, probably, for me in that race. But a trappy little race. I see there's money for, uh, what's this, Paris Cherry? Sure. Well, she hasn't done anything yet, but if she is going to improve, this is the kind of race that she could improve. The same with number seven, Beneath the Moon. Um, yeah, not a nice race, this one. If you are going to take exotics and pick sixes, uh, try and run to as many horses in this last race. Okay, that pretty much sums up my take uh, race by race. Um, most races, I am in agreement with the Ghost Rider. You've heard his selections. There's just the one race where we're completely... Uh, off with each other he didn't well he didn't mention Sergey and he didn't mention World's Your Oyster which are my two roughies in the race although we do have double charge in uh, common there right um, so the big key news there is the Langerman um, has been thrown a curveball because two of the main fancied runners are out there uh, Charles Dickens would have been a very popular choice he's not running and uh, neither is the uh, other horse the ports horse we're jamming who um, was recently bought by them by him when he that one, the um, the Colts Nursery. So that uh, shapes up to be an interesting race. Uh, the other bits of information today, um, we've got a um, best bet coming up, a price booster. I'll find one of those for you. That will come up on a separate video. And just a reminder um, to follow us on Twitter because you will see a lot of our content goes out on Twitter and social medias, on Instagram, etc. One or two punters say, oh, well, we're having, uh, at times, we battle to uh, get access to it. It's all over our social platforms, and uh, not just on YouTube, but also on our web page. So the sooner you get up and running with the Clock in the Gallop web page and with um, all of our socials, the better, because you'll get the price booster information. You'll also get the Take a Bet with Tab initiative, Take a Bet with Tab online with 240. Um, so with the full racing, that is. So uh, make sure that uh, you get all your information just before I go, because Nico will want me to share this. Let me share the July special. Okay, so I'm going to share the um, special that we've got running. It's a massive one, of course. It is uh, the Hollywood Bets Durban July uh, next weekend. There's a lot going on. Uh, we are going to use all of our uh, brain power put together with uh, the likes of uh, the ringer who, of course, talks to us on the channel um, next week. Doesn't get any bigger than the Hollywood Bets Durban July. You want to be in prime position to make use of the information that we have and we'll pass on for the pick six carryover on the day and the quartet carryover on the main race. Uh, so Nick has asked me to remind you, it is a clocking the gallop extra, creating a buzz. Uh, since we launched, of course, two years ago, we've well past 1.4 million views. And uh, the reason for that and the reason why people keep watching is because we do find the value and uh, we'll do our best. I'm going to tell you something now, but I'm not going to tell you the horse. You can, you can watch a bit later on. And Nico doesn't even know this. But Nico phoned me last week. He said, I've found the winner of the July. And he told me what it was. And I said, OK, good luck. Um, but funnily enough, when the computer form came out this week and I started to study, I've actually wound up with the same horse. Um, from a value perspective. So I haven't spoken to him about it, but he might end up being on the same horse. It's not the same horse I've been on and been punting for three months. There's another one. So anyway, um, slightly off the point, but um, the bottom line is it's uh, Hollywood Bets, Durban, July. We love it. Pools are massive. 
There's the story. You've been able to read it. The gist of it is you pay your 250 and you get all of those race meetings. And uh, Nina will be in action, of course, with the PE meeting, which is the Fairview Friday, the 1st of July. Then we've got the Hollywood Bet Sturden July meeting uh, on the Saturday Turf and Dane. So we'll be using the likes of Lyle and Nico for that. And then I see I've got the Kenilworth race meeting on Monday, the 4th of July, where we send out those extra special tips. And um, these are slightly different to our normal programming in so much as we write them down, we've got them, we've give actually five pot numbers, PA numbers or whatever we decide on the day. So that pot of honey might be awaiting all of us for Hollywood Bets during July day. Um, deposit the fee, I'm just reading this slide, deposit the fee into the Crocker the Gallup bank account and uh, Nick has put the details on there for you and away you go. The important thing is, if you haven't done it before, if you've done it before, you know how it works. If you haven't done it before, for heaven's sake, let Nico know uh, on clockingthegallopgmail.com or on that cell number, because otherwise he runs around on the morning of the race trying to get you the information, trying to uh, send you the sheet. And we don't know who you are. You've paid 250 rand and we can't get you the information. So uh, make sure that that is sorted out. OK, that's my story for today. Uh, some nice racing. I don't think there's any massive spooks there. So I've got to find some value for you on the car, but I think I might have. And uh, that'll be up later on on uh, the Price Booster video. From Neil and the team, have a good day's racing. Stay warm. I don't know what Cape Town's like, but it's blinking freezing here in Johannesburg.